who speaks to us seemingly is always the big event, the untoward, the extraordinary, the front page splash, the banner headlines. Railway trains only exist when they are derailed. The more the passengers that are killed, the more trains exist. Aeroplanes archive exists only when they are hijacked. What really going on? What are we really experiencing? The rest, or the rest, where is it? How should we take account of question, describe what happened every day and reoccurs every day? The banal, the obvious, the common, the ordinary, the infraordinary and the background noise. George Patrick, 1973. Southwark's Grand Vitesse Depot forms a parallel city within the city. Its extensive maze of arches provides home and refuge to a bright patchwork of small-scale economies, communities and activities, while the vast elevated platform on top floats above the borough completely cut off by a network rail from the surrounding urban fabric. The proposal opens up the empty platform above the arches and elevates the continuous space of the city into it transforming it into a new civic center that intertwines multiple loosely curated uses into a denser and intensified version of the city. On an urban scale, the project advocates for the reappreciation of the role that a large publicly owned institution holds in the shaping of the city and reassesses the role of Network Rail, London's largest landowner, to surpass that of a conscientious manager of urban space and extrapolate it to that of a catalyst for the production of space and for the regeneration of the city. Can the disused space of the social housing block be reclaimed to generate the host institution for different social groups to invade the boundary? Many discriminated institutions inhabit within Sada, but have distinctive division line upon the control. The host institution outlined a special insertion by disposing inconsistent institutions and modifying social force to undermine the enclosed housing estate. By integrating institution, it reacted this disused space in the housing estate and blocked the territory of the housing estate. The housing institution operated with the land dominator and new autonomy in parallel and proportionally. Re revealing the physical and social structure, it shifted the role of the existing housing estate to generate a new dialogue between diverse groups in Sada. Housing estates make a large part of London, but why are they so separate from the city? Like many housing estates, Kipling Estate has watched the area around it gentrify whilst being excluded from the development plan. With the development of London Bridge, its residents now coexist in the area with office workers, students, traders and visitors, but there is little interaction between the groups. To soften this divide and to integrate the estate into the city, the project inserts a series of shared spaces into the estate, a collaborative space atop Burwash House, a public library within Simla House, and a topography of leisure spaces on top of an underused garage, which is converted into a space for public services, studios, and workshops. The spaces, used by local institutions and traders, will create a platform for collaboration and promote the sharing of resources between the local authority, institutions, traders and the local community. Seeing infrastructure's key role in the transformation of urban space and London's potential to be developed vertically, Vertical Civicness proposes a new type of infrastructure that provides public transport in the vertical dimension. The proposal is a shared circulation tower between a few buildings that joins them into one city block, a series of which are placed across the border of the BID to expand this mixed-use area. The proposed new infrastructure transforms urban space through elevating the city's public realm up from ground level, allowing itself and to the upper floors of individual buildings and reconfiguring its horizontal vertical relationship where individual buildings are currently extruded from two-dimensional land plot. In this way, both public realm and private content of individual buildings are allowed to expand and contract within a three-dimensional network, which makes the alternative vertical city. Shared Roof attempts to respond and re-evaluate the current city planning, which has failed to adapt to Birmingham's prevailing conditions, where fragmented urban spaces have evoked social and physical detachment between the diverse user groups that coexist in isolation. 
Therefore, the proposal is no means a solution but a reaction, where a long spanning tensile roof structure is strategically inserted, bridging the existing residential on the left and primary school on the right, reclaiming the current limited ground floor space, which inevitably allows interaction where in the past did not exist, through promoting different user groups to occupy the space simultaneously and really emphasizing the symbolic gesture of shared ownership of territory. Not only does it radicalize the current divided space, it frees programmatic ties by eliminating the social and physical division. Thus, shared roof facilitates social integration whilst unifying divided space through an architecture insertion, fostering public exchange through blurring land appropriation and reinventing civic infrastructure in Bermondsey. Civic South is a new strategy for creating civic space which bridge divisive infrastructural lines whilst providing a new platform for everyday civic activities, functions and public services. The strategy will be rolled out in the London Borough of Southwark, over the River Thames, Jamaica Road and Bermondsey Railway Viaduct, as a series of armatures. These are bare non-deterministic structures where new activities, scenarios and possibilities can occur without physical hindrance. The new civic armatures will be balanced between provision of new civic space a programmed insertion, which would act as the armature's activator, and a council service to be used by the residents and the community as an interaction point between the general public and social and institutional bodies. Rye Lane in Peckham, a bustling high street financially resilient due to its independent trading models, yet home to tensions between long-term and new residents as it gentrifies. A network of converted, extended and columned spaces reappropriated from residential buildings to a workable shared unit above existing shops with locations stemming from Rye Lane and extending interstitially across one by one kilometre, interwoven with a financial strategy which gathers profits from the reappropriated spaces to fund further conversions into usable units, densifying and intensifying the trade, community and residential stock. Within intimate micro-worlds of Rye Lane, tumbleweeds drift along array of mobile shops and vibrant foreign market stores. Nigerian men loudly preach in their O'Hare house churches and Afro hairdressers hollow at passerbys on street corners. Here is the Peckham Estate affirming its diversive affiliation and establishing members in this migratory practice. The collective mutualism of fluent social exchange is revitalized through converging constellation of subletting rituals. Allegiance and identity in its multifaceted frontier is nurtured through active networks within the social institution. The fluctuating nature of interior and exterior a warrior and a member, meanders into projected spatial vessels of agricultural disposition as kinetic and responsive demarcation of one-to-one -one territories. The estate seeks to reform the dominant binary static scheme of council into intricate relational waves of beneficiaries, recomposing what it means to belong to a city, a locality, to be well rehearsed in perceptive relationships. How can one be a member in this new species of association?